Today we are troubleshooting an arc fault breaker that continually trips, but the interesting thing about this particular situation is it's narrowed down to one particular spot in the house where when you turn on a light switch, the arc fault instantly will trip. Now that's really helpful uh, in my particular case. However, if you've got a uh, an arc fault breaker that trips immediately when you turn it on, then the troubleshooting process might be a little bit more difficult. And I'll make a few suggestions on how you can do that as we go through the troubleshooting for this exact circuit. I currently do not know what the issue is. However, I have a sneaking suspicion. So let's get right into it. I've got a GoPro right here that is recording the panel so that we can see when the breaker trips. Currently it is on and has not yet tripped because that switch is off. Real quick, for those of you who don't know, an arc fault breaker is designed to protect the circuit from arcing within the wiring. One common thing that can sometimes cause an arc fault is an overdriven staple or a spot somewhere where the wiring has been pinched uh, more than it should have been and that can cause the insulation to be damaged and arcing can begin to occur in between the conductors. It's really important that the circuit be able to turn itself off when that occurs because if it didn't, uh, there's a possibility that that arcing could actually eventually produce a fire. So that's the whole reason why arc fault uh, circuit interrupters became code in the first place. Now in your panel, you'll see um, regular breakers like up here. These ones you can see there are no uh, other buttons on them other than the breaker handle itself. Down here though, we can see we've got all these test buttons. And you can see we've got test buttons that are white and te test buttons that are purple. Now, a lot of times you'll also see test buttons that are yellow. And so typically what those colors mean are yellow is going to be GFCI, purple is gonna be dual function, arc fault and ground fault, and white is going to be just arc fault. Now this breaker right here is the one responsible uh, for the tripping that we've been experiencing. You'll see if I go ahead and press the test button, it does trip just fine. Technically, I believe you're supposed to test these things every month. Comment down below, how often do you test your arc fault or ground fault breakers in your panel? Let's head upstairs and investigate this problem and see what we can find. All right, we're recording to see when that breaker trips. Let's uh, go establish a baseline for what we're dealing with. Right here is the switch in question where when we turn this thing on, the arc fault breaker will instantly trip. And this is actually kind of a good example of how troubleshooting would work. Uh, basically with this switch turned off, it's isolating uh, this part of the electrical wiring in the house. And that's what you would have to do if you had an arc fault breaker that was tripping. You'd actually have to just pull the device out. Let's just say for example, it was um, this circuit right here. I would take this outlet out, uh, the, the device out of the wall and disconnect the wires so that it disconnects the downstream wiring. It wouldn't have to be the first one, it could be any in the any point in the circuit. Basically you have to start taking apart the circuit uh, one item at a time until you find the affected area. That can be difficult to do if you don't know where all of your different uh, wires and stuff are located and that's one reason why it's not a bad idea when you're uh, doing your wiring to draw out some kind of a map or just have, have some kind of a system that allows you to keep track of where everything is. Okay, so let me show you what happens when we turn this on. Instantly trips the breaker. So uh, the nice thing is this is only feeding three lights. So we've got three recess lights, one there, one there, and one there. These are all LED trims. And so all we have to do is pull the trim down and disconnect the fixture. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna disconnect these lights one at a time. You can see that since these are retrofits, we've got a socket adapter. And I guess what we'll do is we'll just unplug the, the quick connect fitting right there that actually fed that light. So let's go ahead and go reset the breaker and then we'll turn it on and we'll repeat that to see if it's one of these lights is we'll turn the switch off, reset, switch on, and tripped again. So I'm kind of thinking it's gonna be this one right here. Let's go ahead and pull this one down next. Okay. Now the interesting thing is if this doesn't fix it, and if we have an actual problem with the wiring, that's gonna be a major headache potentially. 
it might be wishful thinking that it's just going to be the device itself because it very, very well could be the wiring. So hopefully the wiring in the wall is not going to be the actual issue, but let's go ahead and reset this one now. Switch off, reset the breaker, and switch on. Oh my. Okay, that's really surprising because uh, this light fixture right there seemed like the light had actually gone bad, so I was thinking, oh, it's probably that. Well, we've got one more shot here, this one in the shower. Last one. So, if this doesn't do the trick, I'm really concerned. And this is actually a newer fixture, or a newer uh, LED trim, so I'm a little bit... I don't know, guys. This could be bad. I'm not trying to be dramatic for YouTube or anything, but... I probably need to think more about the algorithm than I do, uh, but I guess, supposedly, if you smash that like button, that can be helpful for it, so... Alright, switch off. Reset the breaker. Let's see, can you see the switch? Yeah, you can. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Hey, 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 hey. I don't think it tripped. So that LED trim right there is what was causing our issue. Okay, I'll tell you what. Uh, I have not been very impressed with this particular brand. I'll show you in a second. So these are made by Fight Electric, F-E-I-T, and they have been incredibly unreliable. Now they have been okay with their warranty support, but I have had all sorts of issues with these things. I have lights that randomly dim. These, these lights are like five years old or something like that. You can see that one right there. The like plastic part around the center fell straight out and like landed on the couch. It was like super random. We had people over and everything. And then over here, uh, one of the lights in the kitchen here, which uh, there might be too many lights in here anyway, but look, that one's not working very well. It's like way dimmer than the rest and they randomly will turn on brighter and then dimmer again. So what is your favorite brand of LED lights? Uh, is there a brand that's a really good one? Because buying the cheap stuff, um, probably like I should know better that that's not the best solution, but I'm very tempted to just be like, Oh wow. You know, an LED trim like this for five bucks or whatever they were, uh, just seemed too good to be true. And it actually was. I see, I, I, you know, you think that with LEDs that they're going to last forever no matter what. But anyway, so that one right there is the actual culprit. So let's pull that down. If you haven't taken these LEDs down before, all you have to do is squeeze these two springs on the sides like this, and that releases it. So in theory, this light right here has an arc fault happening inside of it. And that's uh, an interesting thing. So what I want to do as the last part of this video is to uh, plug this thing in to a non-arc fault circuit and see if it starts on fire or if anything dramatic happens. Now that was actually a pretty simple arc fault breaker troubleshooting process with it just being an, an end point device that was causing it to trip. A failed LED uh, trim kit like this is your best case scenario with a tripping arc fault breaker. Now if you eliminate the devices and on the circuit, you take the lights down um, and you still are having issues, it's likely going to be an actual wiring issue with some place in the system with a pinched wire or something like we talked about before. So a couple things I would do before you really tear apart your, your electrical system is I would switch out the breaker with a different arc fault breaker that's identical. Uh, just to make sure that it's not a fluke because you can get arc fault breakers that do fail and will nuisance trip on you more often than other ones. So do that first uh, before you really tear everything apart. The second thing then I would do is just 
figure out the best possible way to separate different sections that are powered by that circuit. So if you have a wire going over to that side of the house that's powering an office and a wire going over this way that goes to some bedrooms, you can basically send power to half of the circuit and then if it doesn't trip, you know that that half is fine. If you hook up back up the other side and then it trips, you know that your problem is going to be that direction. So then at that point, you're just going to have to actually tear it apart more like we were just talking about and isolate it down to that last section of wire that actually is the issue. Uh, and sadly, once you've found that particular area where the issue is, your only way to fix it is either to disconnect that portion of the circuit and leave it disconnected or to pull new wire through the wall for that particular area. So it's an unfortunate thing, but it is much better than just going ahead and replacing it with the standard breaker. Because in theory, if you took one of these standard breakers and put it down here, uh, it wouldn't trip. It would just stay on, which we're going to get to that in a minute when we turn this thing on to see uh, if uh, this thing has any like actual arcing happening inside of it. Uh, but if I were to do that, you'd be creating a hazard and uh, bypassing the whole purpose of arc vault breakers in the first place. I'll link in the description to replacement arc fault breakers. All right, let's go see if this thing uh, starts on fire when we hook it up to a standard breaker, and then maybe we'll uh, finish it off with a 12 gauge or something. All right, here's another interesting experiment. We're in the basement here, and this is actually a different uh, arc fault circuit that powers this. And we're gonna just plug in our affected lights. I'm not sure if it's this one or the other one. I didn't actually write on it immediately. Um, let's just see what happens here. So this is the one that's just straight up bad. This one doesn't work at all. So that one's just bad. Now, this is the arc fault tripping device. Now, if the breaker is working properly for this area, this should cause this circuit to trip right here. Let's see what happens. So I've got both of these lights plugged in right now and the light switch is on for this particular area but for some reason it's not tripping the arc fault breaker uh, that powers this circuit. So I think what's going on is that the safety device inside of this light finally tripped the rest of the way because it seems like it's just not responding at all. Whereas when this was still installed above the shower uh, it was coming on when we turned the breaker on just momentarily. And switch on. Let's go ahead and tear these things apart and just see if we can see any obvious problems inside of the devices and then we'll go from there. For some reason in the fall, the flies go crazy trying to get in the house. And right over here you can see we've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flies. Let's see if we can get them all in one blow. We've been deer hunting recently and this is kind of like deer hunting except for it's flies. Well, there's not much going on in these things. Oh, look at that. So this is a <clears throat> little bit of heat paste or heat transfer paste. And that's supposed to transfer the heat up to the metal enclosure on the back of this thing. But you can see how there's just, there's absolutely nothing to these things. It's basically this metal can and this tiny little LED driver. And you can see right there, there is some smoke coming out from underneath that particular LED diode. So apparently it was arcing right there. And so that's why the arc fault breaker was tripping. It was tripping because of an actual arc that was occurring. Uh, and it wasn't just a fluke. Uh, this other light had just failed previously. I don't see any signs of arcing on this one, but this one also wasn't uh, causing the breaker to trip. So right there, that's our problem. We found it. How crazy is that? That is super cool. I'm glad we tore those apart quick. One very important thing that we should do uh, is to put in a couple lights here before my wife gets back because if she comes back and just finds that I've torn the lights out of the ceiling and that's it. I don't know about you guys, but I actually like having 
uh, real recessed cans in the ceiling. And the problem has been solved. You have to come see. Oh, there's no more tape. Does mm -hmm. that mean it works? I don't know. Let's try it. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. So how long did you have to wait for me to fix that? I don't know, like a, a couple months. We had to explain to all our guests like why there's electrical tape over the <laughs> guest bathroom and don't turn on the light or you'll kill everything. <laughs> and they always they they go oh oh okay okay you know but somebody it's just habit you just flip it. Yep. You mm -hmm. know so we're sitting out there and. Everything goes dark. It happens all the time. Yeah, because uh, that circuit actually powers the lights for the entire main level. So all these lights <laughs> in here are all controlled on that same circuit. So that was pretty funny. Oh, yeah. But we finally got around to it. Wow, and... that'd be so nice. Maybe you and Oli can get clean in the shower because you can see if you're getting clean. Oh, I don't. I actually like it with light off anyway. <laughs> I just leave this light on and then turn turn off the other. Oh, one. I like it. I don't Thank want to you. waste power. Well, our I know with the kids, they were really bothered about it being broken for some reason. It was disturbing. I think they finally gave up being worried about it though. Yeah. You just oh, have to wait long enough and then people appreciate the little things once you fix it. <laughs> Honey, that is not, that is not a tactic. <laughs> Don't try that. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys in the next one. See ya. Oh, no. Do you want to see what actually caused the problem? It's on one of these two. It's a good thing I don't do this for my I'll job. tell you, it's on this one. Oh, that's burnt a little bit. Yes, uh-huh. So I'm pretty sure that's where the arcing was happening. That's what was causing huh. the whole circuit to trip. Wait, did I get seven in one blow?